California, they've come up with this website, it's called Steam the Streets. And it works a little bit like the career cruising, but it's more interactive. And even a dinosaur like myself, I've uploaded or downloaded the app to my phone, and I've played around with it, and it's very informative. Uh, again, we've been, he's been coming in to talk to the students for about five, six years, seven years. Um, and so I think you'll enjoy hearing from him. Let's welcome Andy. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all are still asleep. All right, come on. Let's side over here, man. Y'all make all this noise. This is Mr. Sunday. Y'all better be with it. Good morning. Good morning. Ooh, that was solid. That was solid on your first attempt right here. Good morning. Good morning. Still so weak. Small the mic right here, right? Small the mic right here. Good morning. Good morning. All right, all right, all right. Y'all, y'all still asleep. Good morning now, right? Uh, so, once again, my name is Andrew Diaz. I go by the name of DJ Angeli. I am a motivational speaker. I'm a uh, professional musician, so uh, DJ, producer, singer, songwriter. Uh, I'm a tech enthusiast in my regular nine to five. Again, I teach at an all girl middle school here in New Bedford. Um, so that's kind of what I normally do. My backstory is very much a very simple backstory. Bad kid gone good, right? Headed on the wrong path, and I realized there's only two places for me, two boxes I would end up in, a metal box or a wooden box. I decided to go to those two places I do not want to be, so therefore I made different decisions. But those decisions took me a lot longer than what I wanted them to do. Because no one gave me ever the information that I needed in order to make different decisions. I want to remind you of something. Not that many years ago, you were taking naps and eating glue, okay? How many of us here missed nap time? in elementary school. I don't know why they get rid of it in high school, we all need a power nap, right? Not that many years ago, you were taking naps and eating glue, okay? And three years ago, you were going to a new big building. It was huge. You were in middle school trying to figure out where you are. And just a few months ago, you came to this place and was like, yo, this place is huge. How many people have got lost in their like, first couple of days here? Yeah, exactly. You're now in a big school. You are now freshmen halfway through your year. You're about to determine, you're about to get your answer to whether or not you got your shot. I want you to remember something here. My biggest principle in life, because I came from nothing, I practice gratitude. You are in a seat that somebody wants to be in. There are thousands of kids in New Bedford and the surrounding areas that apply to Vote Tech that do not get in. You were one of the very few, like the few fortunate people to do so. Hopefully come Monday, you will also be very grateful and lucky because you got your shot. Because there's students who come to Vote Tech and they're like, oh, I'm gonna get my shot, but I'm gonna get my shot. Then they don't get their shot. So just that message first. So before I start my show, I want y'all to give yourselves a round of applause, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Good about that. that round of applause was not for me. Not so I could feel good, but oh man, the crowd loves me and they're applauding for me. No. The applause is for you. Why? Because you showed up. There are still students right now who are sleeping at home right now, who decided to not come to school. You showed up today. That is already half the battle. Now, whether or not you actually show up to class, and when I mean show up, that means actually performing to the best of your capabilities. Not taking a nap in class. I get it. You might be tired. Get up off the Xbox, get up off the PlayStation, get off the Snapchat, whatever it is that y'all are doing. Get the rest that you need. But you showed up here today. That's half the battle. And that's why I always congratulate every crowd because there are students here who are not going to. Also, I hope that this statement is not true. But in the next three years, some of the people that you started off here at Vote Tech may no longer even be going to Vote Tech. So I hope that that's not the case. I hope that every single person here graduates from Vote. But that's a sad reality. Some people show up and then realize it's a little too hard and they're just like, yo, I'm going to quit. Your next three years of your life are gonna go by like this. You're gonna look back on your high school years and every adult will tell you, oh, high school was some of my best years and the things that I did, it's gonna go by like this. Not that long ago, you were taking naps and eating glue. Not that long ago, you were a little middle schooler. And not that long from now, you will be a senior. What are you gonna do in those next few years? I can't show up every day for you, you have to. But the time goes by quick. So I wish somebody gave me information that I needed to make different decisions. So why am I here? I'm here because I need your help. Okay, I need Vote Tech's help. 
So Volt has a near and dear place to my heart because again, we've been rocking with y'all for a long time. And I created an app, and my business partner and I have created an app to kind of help inspire and inform people and give them information. Part of my app, some of it, I actually recorded here in the hallways of Vote Tech. Like that's how much I got love for y'all that I even in my episodes that I've recorded, I threw Vote Tech in there, right? So you'll see that as part of the leadership um, module there. But I'm here to tell you stories so you can maybe help find your path, okay? So let me tell you this first story. It's about Gary Morgan. Gary Morgan was an inventor who called himself the Black Edison. He faced non stepped racism in being an inventor. So to bring attention to his mass invention, he pulled off the actions and hired a white actor to pose as the inventor. And this is how the Cleveland Police Department learned about his invention. They contacted him after a big explosion that brought the Garment District in 1911. Morgan came down to rescue and brought several gas masks out to the site of the fire. He was able to save eight of the rescuers by placing their faces under gas masks. The rest is history. More than a hundred years ago, a black man invented a life-saving item that is still used to this day. Imagine that. I'm Puerto Rican. I'd be mad if I had to hire some white dude to pretend to be me so I can get my invention on. Every time a fireman goes into a fire, they're using a gas mask. Every time a military professional is using one of these, they're using something that was invented by a black man. No one ever told me this. You were about to go into Black History Month, and you're going to learn about George Washington Carver, Harriet Tubman, right? All these other ones that we basically know. Why no one told me that there's a life-saving device that still exists in this world that was created by a black man? If I would have known that when I was a little bit younger, maybe I would have been a tinkerer. Maybe I would have been thinking of making an invention because I didn't hear too many of that. I didn't see people who looked like me, who came from my community, who sounded like me, who dressed like me. So because I couldn't see it, I decided I didn't want to be. What will your story be? That's what I want. So, what do you want to do for a career? What do you want to do? Brain surgeon. That's some skills right there. What about you? Electrical, like electrician, what about you? Airplane engineer, we got good answers right here, what about you? A what, mechanic? What about you? A lawyer, what about you? Anesthesiologist, you wanna put people to sleep, is that what it is? I got you, I got you, what about you? Child welfare social worker. All right, come on to this side, start talking over here. What about you? Electrician, what about you? Videographer, right? what about you? Automotive, what about you? HVAC, what about you? Yeah, you. What, what you want to do? You don't know yet? That's cool. How old are you? 15 years old. She don't know what she want to do with her life. Guess what? There are grown folks in this room that don't know what they want to do there with their life, right? So it doesn't matter. What about you? A nurse. What about you? A nurse. What about you? Electrician. What about you? A lawyer. What about you? Electrician. All right. All right. Now, you are 14, 15 years old. You are not supposed to be like, oh my god, I have my whole life planned out. I'm gonna go to this college, I'm gonna marry this person, I'm gonna get this house, I'm gonna get this job, this is gonna be great. If you know that at 14 to 15 years old, yo, kudos to you, because I'm still trying to figure it out, all right? <laughs> but there are opportunities out there that exist, that's why I'm here to talk to you about. I'm here to talk to you about the story of the opportunity. The reason I didn't have the information I needed, so therefore I did something different. There is $328 billion being left on the table. Take it. It's that easy for us to go and take that money. $328 billion. That is a huge number. No one ever told me about that. I'm trying to get a piece of that pot, right? How many of us here are trying to buy a house for their parents or something like that? Try to do something next to them. All right, that's cool, that's cool, right? All right. How many of us are trying to drive them exotic cars? You know what I'm saying? Ferraris, Lamborghinis, right? Doing all that kind of stuff. How many of us here are trying to take tropical vacations and live our best life? Exactly, <laughs> right? I'm trying to do that. I can do that when I make a certain amount of money because I can afford that lifestyle. $328 billion on the table because people are not taking these jobs seriously. There's 4 million jobs in the world of STEAM. Science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Every single person in this room falls under one of those letters. How many here in this room are athletes? Athletes in the room? Okay, right? How many of us are artists in the room? How many of us are artists in the room? Okay, okay. How many of us are chefs in the room? Chefs. How many of us are like tinkerers and doers and kind of like playing with things? How many of us are here are technologists that we love our cell phone? Oh, I know I see more hands than that. Y'all better stop lying to yourselves right now, all right? Cool. Right? We do these things. 
every single one that we have, uh, what we have in here, IT, what shop is this right here? Cosmo, this is automotive over here, right? What's there in the back of it? What's that? IT. IT, over here. What? Machine tech. Machine tech. Every single, and if we had more time, I'd tell you to challenge me, but every single shop here at Volt falls under one of these letters in C. Most of these jobs make $100,000 a year. 100 racks. That's some dollars right there. All right? So, why are there so many openings? I don't know. It's not because these jobs are too hard. Oh my God, you've got to be a super rocket scientist in order to do this. No. The things that you are doing right now in your shop, in your life, is hard and complicated. You already do hard, complicated things. So it's not that these jobs are complicated, not that they're hard and they're unaccessible. So it's that enough people are not trying to get into these fields. Why? Because STEM has a branding problem. You might know it as STEM. I know it as STEAM. Because A, at the end of the day, I'm an artist, and art is what brings humanity together. When you're a mathematician, there are art jobs in math companies, and there are art and there are math jobs in art companies, and vice versa, whatever, right? So like it exists. People don't see themselves in this field. The first time I was denied in a program to be, I wanted to go to this like after school science program, right? And when I was looking at it, and like, who's a scientist? They would show me an old white man with a lab coat and glasses on. That's a scientist. I never saw too many black and brown folks in the fields I want to pursue. Or young women. So I was talking to the girls over there at Automotive. Last session I was talking with the girls in plumbing. Oh, those are not girl jobs. Those jobs make money. And if you're a female in a trade, and one of those things that there's not too many female dominated, you're gonna be paid even more money because now you're a minority in that job because you're a woman. So, don't let no one tell you that you can't do whatever that you're supposed to be doing. Because at the end of the day, if this wasn't school, I got inappropriate words for those folks who try to tell me I'm not capable of doing something, right? They don't see themselves as good. So I'm going to show you some things today. I'm going to show you two videos. Tell you why I create an app. So Volk, I hold you near and dear to my heart. Because again, my business partner is in California. So I travel from coast to coast, in and out of the United States here, to go and promote this message. To be like, yo, wake up, we ain't got much time, your next few years are gonna go by like this, there's $328 billion on the table, somebody's trying to get a piece of that pie, I'm gonna show you how you can get some of that. That's my goal and mission. But vote, I created this app, and y'all are like the first schools to see this, okay? So I was here last week with the other group of freshmen, here this week. So before I take this show on the road, and keep going to high schools and teach non this message, I need to know that my app is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So that's why I brought it here to y'all today. So y'all are really gonna become beta app testers today, all right? You're gonna, you're gonna contribute to the good of humanity because, again, this is a tool for other folks who may not have access. I cannot stress it to you enough. You're in a school where teachers care about you. You may not feel that all the time. You aggravate their life, they aggravate your life. Why? Because they know what you're capable of. And you just like to push back because we're adolescents and we're trying to figure out who we are. You have one job, one job only. You need to figure out who you are, live your most authentic self, and contribute positivity to this world. Okay? One job. Figure out who you are, be authentic in that, and contribute positivity. Because the people who are around you right now, your friend group, I hope that you guys stay friends. But at the end of the day, someone's going to go to college, someone's going to go into the trade, someone's going to go and do whatever else is that they're doing. So the people around you may not always be there. You have to do this for yourself. Live most authentically. So if you like doing something and that makes you happy, do that. If someone else is like, yo, that's whack, oh, that's corny, are you doing that, whatever, okay, so those are not your people. So just think about that. So I'm gonna show you some, I'm gonna show you some stuff. I'm gonna show you some, I'm gonna show you a video of my girl Morgan. Morgan is the UI UX designer. Anyone know what UI UX is? Do we have media in the house? Is the media, is media, media grad there, yeah, right? Okay. Anyone, raise a hand if you ever heard the term UI, UX. Okay. So, that's why I do the work that I do. Because they should be hands up. This is Morgan. Morgan used art and technology to now, she was working at Pixar, and now she works for Roblox. How many of us here in the room still play Roblox? Yeah, put them hands up. Live your most authentic self right now. Exactly, exactly. Okay? I know all about Robux, you know what I'm saying? I got two children, right? So, know all about Robux, let me get me all time. Robux, one of the biggest games in the world. A black woman, 
who used art and technology, is now helping to create and sustain one of the biggest games in the world. And it all started when she got a flyer in the mail. This is how it happened. So like, this is a field. This field makes about $96,000 a year. And you're gonna see. So this is Morgan's story. And I'll show you another video and we'll keep pushing. So this is Morgan. Hopefully things work the way they should. Let me turn that volume on. At least the video is playing this time. Hi, I'm Morgan Fritz. I'm a designer specializing in interface and user experience. It's kind of a medley of designing the user interface, what it looks like and how it feels to that user. User experience is understanding how someone would want to interact with this thing, right? It really is listening to a user and so being able to take what's important to them and design accordingly because it's not about what you think would look nice as much as how someone else would be able to use this thing that you're creating. Like, I could design a great video game, but if no one knows how to, like, walk forward in the game, no one will be able to use it, right? Design is a mix of your artistic skills, but also learning how to listen and to ask the right questions. So I grew up in Santa Rosa, California. It's a really strong area for the arts, and so I, I grew up in fine arts and a lot of painting and drawing. So I drew a lot, and I always carry a sketchbook around. I had a great mural painting job, actually, for a lot of high school, and from there I just didn't exactly know what I wanted to do as a job though. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even know design existed. <laughs> and I ended up getting a flyer in the mail for this six week program. So every week of the program, you would do a different aspect of design, industrial design, communication design, photography, and I just, I loved it. After that program, I um, enrolled and got into Carnegie Mellon, started as an industrial designer, which is doing more physical design work. So it could be anything from designing shoes to cars to toaster ovens, you know. While I was in college, I was doing a lot of internships. Started out unpaid, got to paid. I graduated as the first designer to ever get an engineering minor at my university, which is kind of cool. <laughs> and went on to intern first with Samsung, and that was more of an industrial design mix of UX. And then from there, went on to doing more UI UX. I really enjoyed more the thinking aspect of it, right? And so I progressed into UI UX with IBM, and there I was doing more projects, a like huge range of projects. It was a really interesting progression because I went from painting and drawing and then realizing I could apply that into this more tech world of using it. One of the biggest things I've learned is to make mistakes, right? Those mistakes are what help you get to where you want to go. I've made designs that are great, but I've also made a lot that are, you know, mediocre at best. <laughs> and it really does take a lot of those, like, hundreds of bad drawings to get to that one great one at the end. But those hundred drawings are kind of part of that one final incredible piece because it took them all to get there. That's how it starts. She utilized art. How many hands, by raising hands, how many people, well, maybe only two teachers in here, and Mr. Moniz, that's my dude over there, right? Sorry, right? So, how many people in class actually doodle when they're not supposed to be doodling and drawing in class? Yeah, yeah, guess what? She's a little doodler, and now she works for Roblox. That's how it started. Art, right? But she's using art and technology. Obviously, she had to go, she had to build her skills and stuff like that. So. So that, you'll see stories like that in my app. So that's a Morgan. We have one uh, uh, guy, uh, my man Randy, who works for Adobe. So all of us who are in media, like I know you use Adobe products. Um, my man Arab Music, who's a music producer. Um, we have computer analyst, data analyst, computational scientist, video game designer, those type of things live within our app. So you'll first hear a story about that person in the field. So they kind of tell you what their story is, right? The second video that you'll then see, which I'm about to show you right now, is of me. It's always weird showing yourself in the thing, right? Now, I never thought in my life, again, I told you, bad kid gone good, right? I never thought in my life I'd be like, make a YouTube series, I have my own merch store. My kids think I'm famous, you get what I'm saying? My daughter and my son, they're like, yo, my dad is famous. Not realizing I'm just from New Bedford and I'm just be around, right? But I never thought about these things when I was doing what I was doing. 
I'm gonna show you this video now. This is DJ Allen Kelly breaking it down for you in the real world. So this is kind of how our app works. It's like I'm gonna tell you a story and then I'm gonna show you how it actually plays out in the real world. Because you're like UI UX. She kind of showed me, but how does that really look? So this is me. You know what I'm saying? Don't mind. It always feels cringy and whatnot to watch yourself when you're on screen, but you gotta learn to be in your own positivity, man. Again, live your most authentic self and picture your positivity. So, um, watch this video. Hopefully, you enjoy it, and then we'll talk to you about why I really actually need to know. So, play the video and let it rock. Episode 2. My name is DJ Angeli. I represent Steam the Streets, and I'm here getting you connected with all the career options available. Because you know what? This could be you. So today we're digging a little bit deeper into the world of design. And design is everywhere. Even if I just start looking at what's in front of me, right? My turntables, designed. My headphones, designed. My computer is designed. The set that I'm on, designed. And because design plays such an important part of our lives, there's a lot of opportunities for creative people like yourself to go out there and get them. There are over 2 billion websites and 4 million mobile apps, and all of them need UI design. That's user interface design. A UI designer makes it aesthetically dope. They take care of everything from the color, the style, the buttons, you name it. UX designers deal with how users experience a website or an app, and it's one of the most in-demand type of designers, where a UX designer starting off might be averaging around $96,000 a year. That's a lot of money. And companies invest in UX designers because they can bring a lot of value to the table. Because if something goes wrong with how a person is experiencing their website or the app, it can cause their business to essentially fail. So that's why UX design is really important. And in order to get there, you gotta put yourself out there. As much as we can do behind our computer, we still gotta go outside, we still gotta go seize the day. So let's go explore the world of design a little bit more. Let's go steam the street, come on. Car I'm in was designed by UI UX designers. This is the UI. This is where I'm able to access all the controls. This is where I'm able to bump my music. And there was a team hired specifically just to create this part of the car. And the UX is how it all works together for the user. The buttons are easily accessible. The controls and the placements, they make sense. And to get to this place, designers had to meet with car drivers. They had to test out a bunch of different ideas. They probably even threw away a few different ideas. And this is the end result. UI UX is involved. They try to make parking easier for people, right? To pay your parking thing. So I enter this little number over here on my phone, and then I'll put it on the time going in, and we good. Let's get it. So we are at People's Press, a women's own fresh juice bar in downtown New Bedford. You're gonna see the user design experience in action. The point of sales, or the POS, the user is the employee and the user is also the customer. And it has to be quick and easy, especially when it's fast paced. So how good your UI or UX means that when training employees, it'll be faster because if it's too hard to understand, then the line starts to form and that's gonna clog your business. So the point of sales system is software engineering mixed with product design, user interface, and user experience design, allowing anyone to have the opportunity to run their sales through this technology. So if you're using one of these systems to run your business, that means you'd be using the same type of software that other businesses use. See, with the right design, you can level the playing field. But I'm about to have this bowl interface and have a great user experience. Design is everywhere. There are designer jobs behind a lot of the things that we use. 
In order to be a good designer, you've got to build up those power skills. And one of those power skills is critical thinking. And critical thinking is because when sometimes when designing, you have to go into deeper thought. You have to really understand why you're making certain design choices, right? And to understand what you're designing for. And another skill you're going to need for design, it's pretty obvious, but creativity. Being creative is one of the major skills that all designers need because it allows you to use your imagination to come up with ideas and find new solutions to fix problems. All right, so we're here back in the studio after seeing design literally everywhere. It's crazy what you can see and what you do when you step outside, especially when you step outside of your comfort zone. Remember, it's not going to be easy. So if you think a career in design could be part of your story, here's a few things to remember. Number one, you have to do, do, and do. You just have to start creating. Whether you're drawing, whether you're painting, whether you're using software like Canva to maybe create a flyer for one of your local businesses, or maybe you make an album cover for a friend or one of your favorite bands. And then number two, you just gotta get involved, right? So there are plenty of different programs out there for all levels of design. Right? And even some after school programs and some college and some online, wherever it's at, get involved. Okay? And you're going to be there with other people who are trying to do the same things while you're upping your skills. And number three, choose a path. There's a lot of colleges that specialize in design and you can even get your start at a community college if you wanted to. Or if you want to go in the remote world of learning, there's online programs, Coursera, Skillshare, Linda, that's just to name a few. But you're going to have to do the work. You're going to have to network. Remember, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And steady wins the race. Now look, everything you see around you was created by design. Whether natural, industrial, automotive, there's too many to define because there's endless ways we interact with this world. See, your world is the interface and what you do is the experience. We are capable of design, so I hope that you're hearing this because we already make decisions like put this here and that'll work there, what works for mine may not work for theirs. Now that's a skill that could pay if you take the right steps, if you learn you are, if you learn you X. Because when something works and you like it, you keep going back, keep going back. That's how they got us on TikTok, the gram, and even the snap. So if design is everywhere, that means it's inside of you. To get paid as a designer, who's to say this can't be you? to show me that, yo, I can do things as a UI UX designer, right? So now you probably know what a UI UX designer does. Hopefully the video was done well. It's an in-demand job. That means that there are currently openings for that job right now, it pays well. So, and if you dug that, there's more where that came from. So, the two videos you saw featured in the Steam Streets app. So again, my business partner is located in California, used to be here in Bedford, so we are bi-coastal. So in those videos, you'll see me here. I'm in New Bedford, Boston, Providence, Volt Tech, San Francisco, we recorded it everywhere, right? Because at the end of the day, people need this message. So, and this app can share stories so you can see more people who look like us and know about how to get into this field. That's what's really important. So, this is where I need your help. You give feedback, this is what goes down. You're gonna download the app. I'm gonna show you the QR code in a second. When you download the app, you go through a series of videos. A series of videos will then have questions. You answer the questions, you go through all the videos, you start to earn and accumulate points. You accumulate so many points at the end of our season, which is up until June, right? So we started this new season now. You accumulate so many points, you put into a raffle. We're giving away Oculus headsets, we're giving away MacBooks, we're giving away uh, Amazon gift cards, iTunes, whatever it is, because we feel as though the tools are important. If you do the work, you should be in it for the tools, right? So, this is what you do. You download the app, you give me some feedback, you keep it real with me, you write what you said, you accumulate so many points, at the end of our season, we're going to go live um, uh, at least once a month. You'll be part of our community, which then shows more people bringing them into the world. Because again, if you can see it, you can be it, right? So what I want everybody to do right now, take your phone for a second. Take your phone out. I want you to scan this QR code here. Good. 
Now when you download the app, this is going to take you to our website. The website um, will show you everything we have going on there. For our digital artists and media, we also have some avatar challenge where we're giving away $50 Visa gift cards because we need to have more avatar items that look like us. So in this app, there's a little avatar thing. You put a little hair and all this other kind of stuff on it, right, to try to swag it out. We are looking for artists to help contribute to that. So again, this is in its building stages. Both y'all are one of the very few schools. Again, you're the first school to see it like this. Your opinion matters. That's why I come to the school. Because nine out of 10 times, what I've learned about both tech students, they keep it real, they're smart, they're ambitious, and they grind hard. Those are the type of students that I like. Whether or not you believe that statement is true for yourself, I can't tell you the truth for yourself. I hope they really do feel it. So you scan that little QR code there for a second, and then this is what's going to happen. You'll download, you'll create an account. When you create an account, you're going to be given a series of images. That's what's called a SEAM career match. You're going to see two images. You're going to click on one of the images that speak to you. You don't even have to fully know what that image is. But if it speaks to you, click on that image. When you click on that image, you're going to do that for a series of time, and then you'll be taken to, you'll see three faces that are people in the field, and that's kind of one of the career paths that you would like. So if you keep clicking things, you might get video game designer or something that might be a career that you can get into. So once you have that, you'll get your three results, right? So I want you to give, I want you to give me time. I want you, your app is, your feedback is requested. There are eight more career challenges. So that one you saw was UI UX, music producer, video game designer, data analyst, computational scientist, mental health. Um, she's a child and adolescent psychiatrist. She's a Kate Birdie woman. Her name is Vivian Gomes, Dr. Vivian Gomes. She now whips a Tesla and she makes mad money, you know what I'm saying? Kay Birdie from New Bedford, right? Learn about her story. That's Dr. Vivian Gomes about child and adolescent psychiatry, right? Um, so you can hear more stories and learn about careers that can potentially change your life. Because some of us may go into the field of whatever our shop is. Some of us may be in the next four years and be like, yo, I just went to school and that wasn't for me. I just did it because that was the high school I went to and that was the shop I was stuck in. So you have options. $328 billion being left out on the table, I'm trying to get me a piece of that. And if you feel like you're still searching, that's cool. You are 14, 15 years old, you're not supposed to have your entire life planned out right now. But you need to start thinking, because guess what? You're halfway through your freshman year. Halfway through your freshman year. That means you got three and a half years to try to figure out what's going on. So you need to start thinking about that now. And again, congratulations to all y'all, because y'all showed up to school today to show that, yo, I'm trying to figure it out. And if none of these careers speak to you in this app, at least you'll be nine times more informed of something that you didn't know about, right? That's what this is about. Waking y'all up to be like, yo, there's a world of opportunities. Y'all can pursue these things if you do what's necessary. And all these jobs are paying over $100,000 a year. I don't know about y'all, but I saw a lot of hands when you're trying to take these tropical vacations. If you're a UI UX designer, if you're a software developer, yo, you could be in the Bahamas working on your computer remotely. I don't know about y'all, but that sounds like a real nice idea to me, right? So I'm currently learning how to code right now because I like that idea. This could be the start of your story. Not that long ago, you were taking naps, eating glue. Not that long ago, you were a little sixth grader. And then you became an eighth grader and you thought you was top dog in school. Like, yeah, we eighth graders, we running things out here. And guess what? Now you're a little fish again. And in a blink of an eye, in a snap of a finger, you will be seniors again. What are you going to do till then? I have to remind you. The power is in your hand. This little device right here. It's my little iPhone 11. I know some of y'all got the 14, 15s, and 17s, or whatever the case may be. Y'all got the expensive phones, right? This little device right here, okay, has more power and technology than the first rocket that we sent into space. Let that sit with you for a second. What you are holding in your hand has more technology than when we started putting people into space. I can literally create an entire music video here, an album here. I can do business with people across the world. I can FaceTime someone in China if I wanted to. That's crazy. I don't know about y'all, because that's gonna, make sound, that's gonna make it sound like I'm old, but we living in the future, y'all, okay? These things that people do, if y'all are like Simpsons fans and you are the theories on Simpsons fans, like, yo, being able to talk on your watch right now, to talk, that is crazy. You have the power in your hand. Do not become a phone zombie, okay? That's what I call my students right now. I call them phone zombies, because as soon as they're out of school, they're like, like, okay, that's cool. 
Use this. It's a powerful tool. Use it for what it's worth. Stop buying $1,000 worth of phones just to put on TikTok. I can make the same TikTok video on an iPhone 6, all right? Stop doing it just so you can be on the Snapchat with the filters. I can do the same thing. Use this for what it's supposed to be used for. I think technology is the greatest thing ever invented. The internet, I think, is the greatest thing ever invented. And I also think it's the worst, most dangerous thing ever invented. What are you going to do? I'm asking you to use the power that you have. Download the app. Use the app. Rack up some points. Be part of the community. Maybe win some prizes. Give me feedback so then the other students who are not as fortunate as you have an opportunity. Again, there are people who want to be in your seat, who did not make it here. Y'all have a very fortunate opportunity to do something different. You have teachers who care about you. I know you don't feel like that right now. I promise you, I didn't feel like that. You know how many times I was in the principal's office? I would probably be in Mr. Williams' office all the time if I was a student. No one showed me this. No one showed me a black or brown face. No one showed me women that could do these things. I'm sick and tired of our people getting left behind. Y'all are the next wave. You are the next generation. I hate that cliche. You are the future of America. No, you are the present of America. And why only America? Who should not say that one of you won't be in Germany doing something big, inventing the next thing that's going to change the world? Who should not say you're not going to be the next policymaker who actually changed things in the world of politics? Who is to not say that you are not going to save somebody's life because of something that you did? All right, yeah. <laughs> if this wasn't school, I'm going to tell you something right now. Someone in your life, and this has probably already happened to you, someone in your life told you, you ain't going to do nothing. You ain't going to be worth it. Your idea is crazy. You're bugging. You're on something. Because you want to pursue something. If this wasn't school, I have some inappropriate words for those folks and for those haters. Because guess what? Some of those haters are even going to be in your own family. And that hurts. Do what you need to do. You can change your life. I'm trying to be on top of the vacations. I'm trying to do things that haven't been invented yet. Y'all are the next ones to be able to do that. I did what I was supposed to do. It's your turn to do what you're supposed to do now. <clears throat> so, when you get back to class, show up. That's what you did today. Don't be sleeping, no. Don't put the head on the desk. Don't waste your time, because it's going to go by like this. You think I'm playing, but I hope that you remember come graduation year, when it's time and everyone wants to be senior skip day, you're going to be like, damn, it's senior skip day already? How did I even get this far? And it's going to happen like this. Pay attention. Do what you need to do. Because at the end of the day, I want to know what your story will be. My story was, someone didn't give me the information I needed. It took me longer to get to where I was going. But when I got there, I literally do. I'm one of the very few people ever in your life that you will hear say this in loud and public. I love my job. You're not going to hear too many adults say that. I love my job. I love my career. I get paid to make music. I get paid to teach, I get paid to build with young folks to inspire them to do something different. What are you gonna do differently? That is the big question. I can't answer that for you. So, you have the power in your hands, download my app, give me feedback, I need the feedback so I can go to the next school and show them this. Again, New Bedford, I'm sick and tired of us getting a bad rep. I'm sick and tired of this city, and I'm sick and tired of people looking at us a certain type of way. Y'all are doing amazing things here. Your teachers care about you. Stop aggravating their life. I know they aggravate your life. Now, you can give me a round of applause. I know some of y'all still gonna aggravate your teacher's life, you believe me, all right? But the reason they aggravate your life is because they care about you and they know what you're made of. They know what you potentially are able to be of. You know what you're Remember, you have one job. Figure out who you are, be authentic, and contribute positivity to this world. If I turn on the news right now, and I waited 10 minutes, I guarantee you I can see a lot of darkness that lives out there in the world. 
We don't need any more of that. Some people think, especially to the young men, to the young, to the young men of color, I'm going to say this to y'all in particular, to the young men of color, do not become a statistic. They are waiting for us to become a statistic. For the young women in the room, don't let people be right. That's not a job for girls. Girls can't do that. Oh, you're not strong enough. You're not strong enough as a man. Women, fellas, pay attention here for a second. <laughs> women help put men into space. Download my app, give me feedback, be part of a community, earn some prizes, do something with your life because guess what? You're halfway through your freshman year. So, I appreciate y'all more than that, more than that. Freshman year is almost over. Yeah. So, yeah, let's go and let's go do something productive with yourself. My name is D. John Henley. I appreciate y'all. Get back to work.